Hello and welcome to, or welcome back to the Wellbeing Evolution. So this video is looking at paradox, anxiety and Taoism. Now I'm going to kind of, let's say that the reason that I've bound those together in the title will become evident as I go on. But we're looking at the therapeutic process. And when I say the therapeutic process, and this is not exclusive to this video, it's whenever I say it, I'm not simply talking about a client therapist formal session. We can, as Carl Rogers said, uh, experience a therapeutic relationship as long as the core conditions are present. So we may have already experienced how that can feel and the types of, you know, we can have the types of conversations there that tend to emerge. So we'll end up talking about life end up talking about mind and psychology and you know maybe our own neurosis etc and sort of sharing that in an open way um, and when we do that then we may find that paradox can emerge if we make statements about our mind for instance so anxiety uh, is mentioned because it often brings a great example of paradox when we're talking about how we how we tackle anxiety you could say I'm I'm being careful not to say change or get rid of anxiety because that in itself as an approach is often self-defeating in fact it can be exacerbating and perpetuate the situation so the paradox occurs because of that so if we approach anxiety as the individual who's suffering from it in or with the mindset that I want to get rid of this, I need to stop being anxious, I need to get rid of this anxiety, it's not good. And our kind of knee-jerk reaction as soon as we have an experience of it is to kind of, there's a rejection of it. There's a rejection of self and there's a rejection of the experience within our mind. Then that can actually build the tension, can build the reaction that we're having to a point that it exacerbates the anxiety and it reinforces it. Uh, you know, we can't, when we're looking at the mind, when I say the mind, I'm not particularly talking about the brain here, I'm talking more about a, let's say, an experience of self and a, a vivid experience of being conscious. Then we, we can't cut bits out of it. So you can't cut out anxiety and just hope that somehow everything's going to be okay. What we're looking at more is a path of acceptance. And, you know, if we look at a model like ACT, which is acceptance and commitment therapy, it's much more looking at how, how we contribute to our own experience, what we can do to, uh, let's say, bring relief to anxiety. Now, if we're talking about bringing relief to anxiety, then we're actually moving more towards acceptance. And when we're experiencing those mind states, there's a approach of acceptance. So there's there lies the paradox then. If you aim to get rid of anxiety, it becomes stronger. If you face anxiety and look at it and accept it, and allow it, in some ways, allow the energy of what anxiety is to, to kind of settle into itself and be itself and for us not to react with rejection, then often it can kind of settle itself and to some extent, you know, we may say it dissolves. So the reason I've also mentioned Taoism is because Taoism, especially with Tao Te Ching, speaks in paradoxes a lot. Um, Lao Tzu said that true statements often seem paradoxical. And many of the verses in the Tao Te Ching are paradoxical. So I've got a couple here that uh, I'm going to read to you. Um, and then I'm going to finish off with a quote from Carl Rogers as well, which is also paradoxical, I would say. So this is chapter 43 from the Tao Te Ching. The gentlest thing in the world overcomes the hardest thing in the world. 
that which has no substance enters where there is no space. This shows the value of non-action. Teaching without words, performing without actions, that is the master's way. So that's chapter 43, classic example of Tao Te Ching speaking in uh, paradox. So chapter 45 goes thusly. True perfection seems imperfect, yet it is perfectly itself. True fullness seems empty, yet it is fully present. True straightness seems crooked. True wisdom seems foolish. True art seems artless. The master allows things to happen. She shapes events as they come. She steps out of the way and lets the Tao speak for itself. So that's the Tao Te Ching. You may have noticed that I said she in regards to the term the master. Uh, the, the pronoun for genders is not in the Tao Te Ching. So I like the Stephen Mitchell translation and he points that out himself. So he, he alternates. Each time the master's referred to, he will say he or she. So the Carl Rogers statement that I'm going to uh, quote, which is very short, uh, is another perfect paradox. Uh, so Carl Rogers said, what is most personal is most universal, which of course sounds like a paradox because how can something so specific be universal? I, my interpretation of that, I can't say this is an objective uh, truth because I've not read his own uh, you know, explanation of that quote would be that if someone shares something so personal in you know from the depths of human experience that we can recognize that there's something universal in someone sharing something that's so personal because we're all human beings right so uh, that's the end of that video thanks for listening